bless the name of the Lord. We give God praise, glory, and honor for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in this moment. I am so thankful and so grateful to be able to celebrate our risen Savior on tonight. Uh, it's time for Bible study. My wife spoke a, a powerful word uh, on this morning and uh, at 12 o'clock noon. I was tremendously blessed by the word of the Lord that came forth out of her mouth and and I'm going to do my, my level best to just assist her, to aid and abet her, because uh, she's a, a, a great helper to me. And I'm forever blessed because of her presence in my life. And I oftentimes tell people, I, I said 34 years of marriage, is, uh, isn't it, is, is it something that you can wink at? Because there are so many people that start off with us, uh, they're no longer with us, that start out married, that's no longer married. But my wife and I, for 34 years, we have endured and I'm so grateful. And it hasn't been a chore. You know, oftentimes when we hear people talk about relationships and talk about marriage, um, they talk about it as, as if it was a punishment or talk about it as if it, it was a chore. Uh, it has not been a chore uh, loving my wife. It's been easy loving her. And I'm blessed because she's in my life. So I'm kind of doing what she did uh, on today at 12. I'm trying to uh, slosh the waters just a little bit, trying to get y'all to come into the room to the rune. Uh, my granddaughter would say, come into the rune. So I'm trying to get y'all to come into the room. Uh, do me a favor, go ahead and uh, share the video, share this message. I'm going to be um, sharing some things with you on tonight uh, that's going to motivate you, that's going to um, going to cover you, uh, cover your mind. And, and I'm forever grateful uh, for the presence of the Lord on my life, using me, choosing to use me. I don't take this opportunity lightly like so many others. I understand that God can hire me uh, just as he hired me. He can fire me. Uh, he, he, he hired, he allowed the people of God to ask for a king, and, they, and he gave them uh, King Saul, which was the choice of men. And you know what happened, praise God. He got fired by God. And so I want to make sure I do what I, I'm supposed to because I don't want to get fired uh, by God. Can anybody say amen? amen. I, I don't want you guys to, to, to make teaching uh, tonight arduous. I don't want you to make teaching tonight arduous. I, I, I want you, if you can, to uh, just agree with truth because um, one of the things I found out, I found out that, that just because you take a break don't necessarily mean the enemy has taken a break. You know, some of y'all on spring break, well, guess what? You got to remember just because you're taking a break and you're on spring break don't necessarily mean that the enemy is taking a break. And so I don't need you guys to, to, to make this word arduous. I need you guys to make this as simple as you possibly can because I need to share some things with you on uh, tonight that's going to bless you. Uh, I'm here to encourage you, but I'm also here to strengthen you because oftentimes, even as we go to church, praise God, we fail to understand that, that sometimes even a good rebuke is strengthening us. Yeah. It's like growing up, and, and maybe in your house, you, you didn't get this or experience, uh, experience this, but my, my sister Carmen put something in the socket. My mama had always, she had been warning my sister, and you know, stay away from the sockets. When you remember back in those days, they didn't have socket covers. They didn't have that, you know, like they do now, praise God. They, they protect your children from going to the socket. But Carmen kept on going to the socket, kept on going to the socket, and all of a sudden she stuck the wrong thing in the socket, and she got shocked, and that was the last time my mama had to worry about her uh, touching that socket. So likewise, you would tell that child the stove is hot, stove is hot, and that child would, would continue to, to play around the stove, and all of a sudden that child just feel the heat of that stove. Uh, like Carissa, it burnt me right here. And, and, and you don't have to worry about that child no more. What, 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 what happened? We, we learned, we learned, uh, we learned obedience through the things we suffered. We learned obedience through the things in which we went through. We learned obedience through the things in, in, in which we uh, might have might have experienced. And so Carmen learned obedience through, through that socket. And your child learned obedience through touching that, that hot stove. And so... I think I've 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 lost the water enough. So do me a favor. Don't make this this message on tonight. Don't 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 let this be arduous. You make sure that you allow this to be as simple as you possibly can. 
and let's just give vent to the truth, and we're going to celebrate our risen Savior. Can anybody say amen? Come on, do me a favor. Put your hands together and give God some praise, if you would, please. <clears throat> Come on and give him some praise. Give him some praise. Come on and bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's get right into the word of the Lord on, on, uh, on uh, tonight. I'm going to be reading Mark, the fourth chapter, uh, 35 through 41. I want to say this because oftentimes when I start reading, I have somebody come on and say, what scripture is this? You know, so right now, let's just go ahead and, and build a foundation on the scripture. Mark, the fourth chapter, 35 through 41. Mark, the fourth chapter, uh, 35 through 41. If you're listening, do me a favor. Go ahead and just put Mark. Uh, Mark 5, uh, Mark 4, 35 through 41. And so somebody can just, when they come on, they'll get that. And we just move on, praise God. We just move on. We're going to make this as easy as we possibly can. Uh, tonight I want to be ministering from the subject, Standing Against the Spirit of Uncertainty. Tonight I want to minister from the subject, Standing Against the Spirit of, of Uncertainty. Again, tonight I want to minister from the subject, Standing Against the Spirit of Uncertainty of uncertainty. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful and so thankful that you've given us a moment to come before you once again. God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will anoint me afresh, even as the word of the Lord uh, goes forth on tonight. Father, I bind every spirit of retaliation. I bind every spirit of sedition, uh, disobedience, Father, and rebellion. I bind it now. I bind the spirit of stubbornness now in Jesus' name. I pray that the eyes of the people's understanding will be enlightened on tonight. Bless your people now. Strengthen your people. God, I'm forever humbled to be in your presence, and I love you for using me on tonight. I thank you in advance for what you're about to say to your people. Now, bless them as you've blessed me through the teaching of the word on tonight. We honor you in Jesus' name. We do pray. And let everybody say amen and amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless God if you can. Amen. Standing against the spirit of uncertainty some of you are challenged by tomorrow or the fear of tomorrow i need to say it again some of you are challenged by tomorrow or the fear of tomorrow uh, you got to get this because because some of us are ambiguous about the future and we're ambiguous about ambiguous about what the future holds and and that makes us uncertain that makes things unclear when we become un um, ambiguous about the future and what the future holds. Now, let me go ahead and tell you right now, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen next week. Don't know what's going to happen next month, but I know who does. And my trust, watch this, and my trust is not in tomorrow. My trust is not into next week. My trust is not into next year, but my trust is in the one that holds the keys to my future. And so some of us, we become ambiguous. We become ambiguous uh, about the future and, and what the future holds. And so we need to make sure, Deacon this Angie, that we don't become uncertain about tomorrow and uncertain about the future. As long as I'm doing, my responsibility as a believer is to obey the, 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 the word of God. And I hear so many people say this. I hear so many pastors say this, and you'll be blessed by this. I hear so many pastors say that I can't get them to listen to what I'm saying. I can't get them to obey me. Well, let me go and tell you right now, I'm not asking you to obey me. I'm asking you to obey the scriptures. Because when you understand that whom the Son sets free, you are free indeed. Your responsibility as a believer is to obey the scriptures. So I'm not fussing at people that won't obey me. But I am challenging every son, every daughter, every member, every, every believer, every Christian to obey the scriptures. Can anybody say amen? So the Bible says in Mark 4 and 35, the Bible says on the same day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. 36 says, now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. Get this. And other little boats were also with him. And a great uh, windstorm arose. And the waves beat into the boat. So that it was already filling. Now watch this because um, <coughs> 
because I, I felt something when I said this. Uh, 37th said this. It says, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Now, you got to get this because you got to look at what the instructions was. The instructions was, it says, let us, let us cross over to the other side. Right. Now, 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 watch this. You got to get this because this particular teaching is not when, when, when Jesus went up to the mountain to pray and told his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. Now, just meet you over there. Paraphrasing it now. They, they, in other words, they, they knew the power of Jesus Christ. They didn't even question how was he going to get to the other side. So this was, wasn't a time when Jesus uh, was stealing away to pray and told his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. This was not that. You got to remember, he said, he said, let us cross over to the other side. And 30, 37 says, and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. Now watch this because you got to look at this because some of us need to understand that if Christ told us to go to the other side, I was ministering to the Lord on last night. And, and what he was saying was, he said this, he said, stop just telling people that, that God was in control of the windstorm. He said, tell the people that God was in control of the boat as well. See, see, we, we thought we were going to talk about how the authority of God, the authority of Jesus Christ was the, the authority of God was manifested through the life of Jesus Christ. And he had authority over the windstorm. But he said, stop, stop just talking about that and tell the people that he was in control of the boat as well. How do I know? Because he said, let us cross over. And so he said, let us cross over to the other side. That means I am in control of the boat as well. And so I knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened. So just because certain things catch you off guard don't necessarily mean, no, let me go and just re 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 rephrase it. It will not catch God off guard. So when things catch you off guard, it will not, it cannot, it shall not catch God off guard. Can anybody say amen? The fact that God is good does not mean that he will protect us from all kinds or all types of suffering. I know that God is good, but it don't necessarily mean that God is going to protect me from all kinds of suffering. I was talking to a young man the other day. Uh, he had inboxed me and he was talking back and forth and he was asking me about about the shot and then what he what, what I told him I said you know my conviction is you know that I'm going to be taking the shot and, and of course uh, I, my wife and I we scheduled one for tomorrow so we'll take our our for, first dose uh, tomorrow and so what he did was he uh, he sent me he sent he sent a a uh, a, a uh, an article. And, uh, and he tagged me in it. And the article was talking about the swine flu. The article was saying how people took the, the swine flu and how people got sicker and how people died. And he was trying to discourage me from, from taking the vaccine because of what was happening uh, with the fly, fly, uh, swine flu shots. And, and, and he was going back and forth. We were going back and forth. But one of the things I began to say, I, I began to say this. I began to, begin to let, let him know. I said, listen, as, as a leader, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be here for my wife. Now, now watch this. Some of you almost convince us that God loves you more than he loves us. And this young man was almost convincing. He was almost convincing to the point that he almost convinced me that God loved him more than he loved me. I had people, friends, that, that died because of this virus. And he said that my mother-in-law got the virus. And we spoke the word of the Lord. And we rebuked the devil. And now she is doing fine. But, but you've got to understand that just because God is in control of life don't necessarily mean that he's not in control of death. Y'all getting quiet. Just because he, he, you know, so we, we look at God as being just in control of life. But, but God says, listen, God said no one can go beyond this point in life. That, that it was a point unto man to wants to die. Then comes, come on somebody, then comes judgment. And so you got to get to a place where, where just because someone didn't die in your family and just because someone died in my family don't mean that God loves me any less than he loves you. Are y'all hearing this? 
And so you got to be very careful because what's going to happen, it's going to be, uh, watch, this, watch this, Missy, it's going to be a traumatic experience after you done, done spoke the word, after you done prayed, praise God, and after you done prophesied, and they still die. Or they still get sick. And God still says that I'm in control. How do I know this? Because I believe that I'm a man of faith. And my, and my sister was on her bed of affliction. She was suffering with cancer. Cancer was eating up her body. I, I, I played the word of the Lord by her bedside when I wasn't there. But when I came in there, praise God, I spoke the word of the Lord. I prayed over her. I prophesied to her. I spoke and I said, you shall live and not die. To declare the words of the Lord. And she still died. And she still died. And I spoke the word of the Lord. I prophesied. I spoke every healing scripture. My wife and I was laying hands. We touched and agree, and she still died. Does that, does that mean that God didn't do his part? Does that mean, oh, y'all getting quiet. Does that mean that God didn't do his part? But the thing that, you, that I didn't say, she couldn't die until I walked into the room to release her. I got a phone call 4 o'clock in the morning, and my oldest sister said, she's not going to die until you release her. My prayers kept her alive. She's not going to go anywhere until you come and release her. I went to the, to the, to the hospital at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I say, it's all right, Gail. You've served your time here on the earth. It's okay, Gail. You can die. And within two hours, she was gone. So we've got to be very careful how even though we speak the word of the Lord and we, we prophesy and we read the scriptures and things do happen. Yeah. And we're looking at it right now because he said, let us go to the other side. But yet a storm came. Yeah. 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 If, 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 if Jesus was God in the flesh, wouldn't he have known yeah. that the storm was going to affect us like this? Absolutely. Let's talk about this. Because I don't know if y'all I don't know if y'all getting blessed by this. So the fact that God is, is, is good does not mean that He will protect us from all suffering. Rather, it meant that He will be with us in our suffering and accomplish His good purpose through me. He's going to be with me. Now, he's, he may not protect me from all of my suffering, but it means that he's going to be with me. And he'll, he'll say to me that the best is still yet to come, even through your suffering. Every person that, every person that suffers right come out better. Every person that goes to, through, through accusations and and temptations, every person that goes through it, right, praise God, sufferings and, and tests, they come out better. Why did they come out better? Because they understood that God was doing a work on the inside of them. And I may not be able to explain every level or every degree of my suffering, but I know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and for them that are called according to his purpose. Somebody out there says it's working together, baby. It's working together. It's working together. 38 verse says this. It says, but he was in, in the stern, also on a pillow. Now, remember what the Bible says. The Bible says that the boat was already filling up. So if the boat was already filling up and Jesus was in the bottom of the boat, that means that he was on a soaking wet pillow. That means, Monique, the pillow was saturated. Can anybody say amen? The pillow was saturated. So the Bible says, but he was in the stern also asleep, asleep on a pillow. So watch this. While, while, while others are going crazy because of the storm, Jesus was, was clement. And what that means, that, that means mild, and it means calm, it means tranquil. He was clement. He was, in other words, I'm calm, I'm, 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 I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm tranquil, because I know that everything is going to be all right. See, see some of y'all, while y'all losing y'all mind, somebody's on the boat saying, I'm still calm, 
I'm still tranquil. Come on, somebody, because I know that everything is going to be all right. I'm mild. I'm, I'm calm. I'm, I'm tranquil because I know everything is going to be all right. B portion says, and they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It amazes me how uncertainty makes us doubt. It amazes me how trouble takes control of our faith. It amazes me how uncertainty makes us doubt and how trouble takes control of our faith. Bible says in 39th verse, the Bible says we're still in Mark 4, 39 now. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great, come on somebody, somebody a calm. Now you got to get this because I just told you what the word clement means, C-L-E. M E N T. I just told you what it meant. It meant calm. The only thing Jesus did was spoke what was in him to what was troubling other people. The only thing Jesus did, Jesus, Jesus spoke what was in him to calm what was troubling other people. Jesus will speak to what's tormenting you. He will address the storms in your life. So the only thing he did, because remember he said, he said, peace be still. The only thing he did was spoke what was on the inside of him to address what was troubling the disciples. Now you got to get this, Deaconess. Now, it I, you notice I said it was troubling the disciples. Where was Jesus? In the bottom of the boat. Doing what? Now, now I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself, and I know I am. But, but, now, but now, don't expect me to be troubled by the things that trouble you. So many of us, so many of us, what we do, we get, we get other people all stirred up by stuff that's troubling us. We get other people that's all stirred. We get them stirred up, praise God, because we're troubled by certain things. But the devil is a lie. I am not going to allow your care to become my care. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cast all of my cares upon him because he careth for me. And so, and so Jesus was not, Jesus was not disturbed. Jesus was not troubled. The reason why Jesus was not disturbed or the reason why Jesus was not troubled because of what he told his mother during the first miracle that he ever performed. He said this. He said, my time had not yet come. In other words, a storm ain't going to be able to kill me. I'm not. I'm not going to die here on the sea. Y'all see y'all getting quiet again. I'm not going to die here on the sea because my time had not yet come. Let me finish this. I thought y'all would be blessed by that. I thought y'all would be blessed by that. So, 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 watch this. Watch this. Jesus. Jesus' powerful power over the storm repudiates the storm. Now, what repudiate simply means, repudiate means that I took the authority from out of the storm. I, I, I renounced the storm. I took the power. Come on. I took the power out of the storm. Now, it don't necessarily mean that the wind still wasn't blowing. It just wasn't blowing to intimidate or bring fear in the boat. Because if anything know about any, anybody know about the water, the wind will keep on blowing. But what Jesus did, Jesus repudiates. He repudiates the storm. He took the authority out of the storm. He took the power out of the storm. Oh, y'all getting quiet again. He took the authority out of the storm. 
And that's exactly what he did for your life, praise God. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest that he may destroy the works of the devil. He took the power, the authority from the devil before the devil could, could do what he wanted to do in your life. And that's why I've been trying to tell y'all for years, you are fighting from the place of victory. Maybe God brought the wrong crew here. So Jesus' power over the storm repudiates the storm. He denied the authority of the storm to disturb his peace. I'm down here sleeping on a soaking wet pillow, enjoying life, obeying the will of my father, and y'all and y'all disrupt my peace. You notice how people, now, now, now you notice, and this is not, now I'm just going to do something real fast. You notice how people will, will, will try to bog you down over stuff that they can handle? Yeah. Yeah. Now, you mind your own business. You're doing what you're supposed to do. You're obeying the will of the Lord. And there's some things in which they can handle. They, they just bog you down with things in which they can handle. Can anybody say amen? Let me finish this. Let me finish this. God is, a, God is great. God is good. And God is still in control of the storms that's in my life. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. When, when Jesus died, Jesus, Jesus told, took the sting of death. And so what, 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 what Jesus does in a storm, he takes the sting out of the storm. Because if he didn't take the sting out of the storm, some of us would become depressed. Some of us will become aloof, which means which mean withdrawn. You'll you, you start backing up. Some of y'all start running away and hiding, praise God. So he has to take the sting out of the storm. So when the devil tried to kill you, he took death out of the storm. But he let the storm still push on. Come on, somebody. When the devil tried to take you on to praise God, he held your hand like he did Peter when Peter was about to sink. And so what God would do, God would take the sting out the storm. Somebody just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody say, glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody say, hallelujah, hallelujah. 40 verse says, but he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Why are you so fearful? Why is it you have no faith? Now, why is this so important? The reason why this is so important, they had been, they had been walking with Jesus now for a period of time. And so, and so it's not like this was the first miracle they experienced. I'm convinced in my mind that if I saw you do it one time, you know, you, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. You don't have to have all the degrees in the world. I'm just convinced that, that my faith in you, if I seen you do it before, I know you can do it again. New birth, if God brought you out before, don't you know he's able to do it again? He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works on the inside of you. So I'm just a, a, a firm believer that if he did it before, he's able to do it again. Can anybody shout glory? So he said, wow, you're so fearful. And, and how is it that you have, how is it? It's a question. How is it after you've been walking with me uh, this long time that you have no faith? 41 says this. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. We live in an uncertain world. But in the face of uncertainty, we must remember that we trust in a sovereign God. Life is uncertain, uncertain but God isn't. Life is uncertain, but God isn't. Life is uncertain, but God isn't. In times of uncertainty, we do some things instinctively. The disciples 
The disciples did things instinctively. Like some of us, we do things instinctively. When we, when we experience a trial, we do things instinctively. When we face a test, we do things instinctively. When we are misunderstood, we do things instinctively. Oh, see, I'll get quiet. We do things instinctively. instinctively. Can, can, can you say amen? <sighs> Instinctive. So what happens is this, Dickiness Angie. If he can keep on getting you distracted by a supervisor on your job, and you haven't maintained a level of self-control, then that's what he's going to keep on doing. Because you're still doing things instinctively. He, al he already know how you're going to respond because you've been responding instinctively the same way. So until something changes in me, then the devil is not going to change his tactics. Even though the, even though the Bible says we're not ignorant of same devices. His, his methodology, his tactics, lest he should get an advantage of us. The disciples was, was impetuous. It was, it was hasty. They were led by, they were led by their emotions. They, they, they became emotional that, that even though Jesus is on board, you're asking Jesus, care if not, if we perish. perish. Now, I want to I go ahead of myself, Deacon S. Angel, because I believe this will bless y'all real good. I'm going to go ahead of myself. But, but one of the things that, that, that God spoke to me today is, is this. The enemy will use what you care about the most. I'm, I know I'm going to read that later, but I, I just had to drop this on you. Uh, praise God. He, 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 he uses what you care about the most. And so the, the disciples became impetuous. They, they, they just responded hastily. Uh, Master, careth not if we perish. Get up, Jesus. The boat is filling up with water. We're about to sink. The winds are boisterous. The storm is unceasing. Get up, Jesus. And we wake Jesus up when we have a word. And the word said, let us go over to the other side. You bothering Jesus when you already got a word that you're coming out of debt. You're bothering Jesus when he already told you you're going to get a promotion. You're bothering Jesus when he said he's going to heal your, your mind, your ministry, your marriage, your money. You bothering Jesus when you got a word. Now, now. Let me say this. Raquel, let me say this. Whenever the disciples faced a, a storm on the sea, on the lake, on the water, it, it had to be, it had to be a bad storm. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, because they weren't average fishermen. Some of them, oh, y'all see y'all looking crazy. Some of them came from a life a fishing. Sons of Zebedee, their daddy owned a fishing company. They, they, they had a life of fishing. So it's not like they've never seen a storm before. It was just they had never seen a storm like this before. 
Okay, okay, Christians. Come on, come on, Christians. Come on, Christians. Don't hold up your slave finger. I want to give you something. Some of y'all have seen storms before. When you accept Jesus as your personal savior, he came on board. But you've never seen a storm like this before until Jesus came on board. And I believe that it was designed that way. Because some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But we will believe in the name that is above every name. And at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. And so I believe that it was by design that, that you faced storms before. You was able to manhandle some of those storms you faced before. But when Jesus came on board, you had never seen a storm like this. Now, why is this so important? Because in some storms, Jesus wants to prove to you that you don't have to vacillate when the storm is raging at its highest. Oh, God, y'all get. Oh, where the real saints at? You, you, you don't have to vacillate when the storm is, when the storm is, is, is raging at, at its highest. Now, now, let me give you something that's so powerful. Watch this, Dominique. See, you've got to remember that, that, that some of us, the storm is raging higher than other people. Some of us, some of y'all can just take, <sighs> but then some of us can handle a hurricane. And so when the storm is raging high, God wants, to, God wants to prove to you that he is still on board. And I, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to vacillate. Let me finish this up. Are you guys being blessed by this? Yes. Families, families that are out there, are you guys being blessed by this? I love y'all. I hope you guys are being blessed by this. I really do. So, so, so let's finish this up. So, so the disciples, um, impetuous, they were impetuous in the times of trouble. How do I find peace in the midst of my storm? The Bible says in Philippians 4, Four, four through seven. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your, let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and, and petition. With thanksgiving. Present your request to God. And the peace of God. Which transcends all understanding. Will guard your hearts. And your minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 4, 4 through 7 in the NIV. And let me finish this up. How do I find peace in the midst of the storm? Number one, rejoice in the Lord always. My wife was talking about, my wife was talking about uh, uh, praise and, and, uh, and worship just for a moment. Just, just for a moment this morning. And she was saying nothing like, ain't nothing like just, just lifting up your hands and giving God some praise. But one of the things well, while she was teaching, God began to show me, he began to tell me the most, the most effective praise is spontaneous praise. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I, they're quiet in here. Can I, can I get somebody to understand what I just said? The best kind of praise is that spontaneous praise, that spontaneity, when, when nobody has to... To, to egg you on and there's not a keyboard player there's not an instrument or there's not a harp there's not a drum but but it's a spontaneous praise when i can just oh glory to god i i like the saints of old i mean all of a sudden they just break out in a dance and a, a shout and a praise, ah, glory to God. I, you know, we, I couldn't understand it then, praise God. But it just will, it just will break, ah, gl ah, 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 glory to God. Just a spontaneous praise. And, 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 it, and, it's, and it's funny to us, praise God. But they knew what got God's attention. 
So you got to learn how to rejoice. We in all ways. And the most effective praise is that spontaneous praise when nobody is egging you on, when nobody's trying to encourage you, but when you get like David and learn how to encourage yourself in the Lord, somebody give God a spontaneous praise. Glory to God. Uh, so number one, rejoice in the Lord. This is not only done when things are going well. You can tell a lot about a person's character and relationship with God by how they act in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of their trials, and in the midst of their storm. Jesus, care not that I perish. Number two. Let your gentleness, patient, be evident. It is not necessary for everyone to know when you're going through difficulty. There should have been one person on that boat saying, hey, hey, hold, hold hey, hey, hold up. Should have been one crazy person just, I just believe it. Hey, hold up. I know we've never seen a storm like this before, but we got the man on board. And the man said, let us go cross on the other side. So you're trying to tell me that that, 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 that that Jesus isn't concerned about his own well-being? Now that'll preach all by itself. You're trying to tell me that Jesus isn't concerned about his own well-being? That, that, that if he die, we're going to die. Or if we die, he's going to die. So he's not concerned about his own well-being? And so if he's at peace in my storm, then I need to be at peace in my storm. If he's not in an uproar in my storm, I don't need to be in an uproar in my storm. Stop letting small things drive you crazy. Stop letting petty people ruin your, your potential, your productivity. Everyone, everybody should know that you got, that you're going through some stuff. Let me finish this. Oh, God. I got to. What, what time is that? I, I might be over my time. I got a few minutes. There are far too many people who love the attention they get from the trials they are going through. Some of us walk around with a shirt on, a t-shirt. I'm going through. Your face tells it all. Don't talk to me today. Don't say nothing to me. Don't say nothing to my kids. Don't say nothing to my husband. Don't even talk to my dog. Then you got the, you got the mitigated gall to say not today. So some of us enjoy the attention that we get when we're going through difficult. You want people to feel sorry for you. You want people to be sympathetic. Now don't get me wrong now. When, 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 when the least of us is, is going through, we should be congenial. We should be. When, when the least of us are, are going through, when, when, when people, the defenseless are going through, we should be congenial. But I'm talking about you that been in the way all these years, that praise God with the best of us, that run around the church speaking in tongues. Come on, somebody. Flipping over pews. Now you're going through some stuff. You want people to, 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 to be sympathetic. Because you like the attention that it gets. So this is not the same as standing together through difficulties. What a powerful testimony is it when people see that you're going, that, you're, you, that, that you are gentle, patient, trusting in God when things are not at its best. I'm gentle. 
I'm patient. I'm trusting in God, even though things are not right at home. I'm gentle. I'm patient. I'm kind. I'm trusting in God, even when things aren't its best at home. That's why I told y'all, I said the enemy will attack what you care about the most. I, I used to I used to care about 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 my cars. I used to care about my home. I used to care about it. So we, we experienced a difficult, a real slide in the giving at the ministry. And I almost lost my home. Almost lost my two cars. And I asked God, I said, I said, I said, God, I said, what am I going to do? And God said, you're going to do what you've been doing. You're going to trust me and keep on obeying what I said for you to do for you to do. And so now I got the attitude. Um, come get the car. Take the house. See, oh, see, I, I, see, 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 the fact, the fact is, I, I, the, if it can, can I just be honest, I'm, uh, sons, I'm going to be honest. The fact is, I really, I, I really wasn't concerned or about the cars. It really wasn't a care. I was concerned about being embarrassed. What, what, what the saints are going to say if the pastor ain't got nowhere to live? What the saints are going to say if the pastor and his family thumbing around? What is the saints? So I was embarrassed. I was, I was too concerned about being embarrassed. And then God spoke to me. I got a knock on the door and it was a sheriff department. And they, and, and they, and they, 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 um, they had me sign something because they had a stack of paper of uh, foreclosure on my house. And I said, I was already delivered. I said, God, what you going to do now? God said, I'm going to do what I've been doing. They refinanced the house. My mortgage now, come on, so I'm not going to tell you what it is, but, my, but they, they refinanced the house. So you got to remember, if you got favor, favor is better than money. And the only thing I did was I said, God, what you going to do now? I, I'm so stupid. I was still buying my wife stuff. She, was still had, she still had Christian Lobertines, and I was still fighting in the courts. I was saying, God, I'm trusting you. Praise God. And whatever you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Wherever you want me to live, that's where I'm going to live. Praise God. And God worked it out. Don't you know that God is waiting to work things out for you? Listen, God, God is waiting to work things out for you. So don't be talking about Jesus. Care if not if we perish. So somebody, somebody, somebody yell, somebody yell this and say, and, and say, I'm your concern now, God. Oh, say, <laughs> we finish this. We finish this. I got to finish this. I finish this. I finish this. Number three, be not anxious, anxious about, about anything. It isn't beneficial to constantly be in crisis mode. And that's what some of y'all out there, y'all, y'all always in crisis mode. Come on, come on, James. Come on, James. Stacy, come on. Everything is always serious. I don't care how small it is. It's always serious. It, 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 it always needs all your attention. And, it, and if it don't get your attention, something's going to happen if it don't get all your attention. And so you're always in crisis mode. I thought we talked about this before. You're always in crisis mode. You always ignore me. You always, you'll never pay attention. You're always in crisis mode. Some people generate this when it isn't there. 
and are constantly in the state of freaking out. you in crisis mode. When you're in crisis mode, you're always in a state of just freaking out. Oh, God, let me finish this. Let me finish this. Let God be God and quit getting ahead of God. Some people are on your boat to nettle you. N-E-T-T-L-E, to nettle you, which simply means, come on, hallelujah. Glory to God. Which simply means to vex you. To agitate you. To irritate you. Oh my God. Now, now, now I'm, I'm going to get in trouble with this one. I'm going to get in trouble with this Somebody need to tell the devil to get off you, my boat. Get off my boat. You are, there, you are there to vex me. You are there to irritate me. You are there to aggravate me. Get the hell off my boat. Oh, God, I think I'll teach that son to get the hell off my boat. <laughs> so some people are, are, are on your boat to nettle you. To irritate you, to annoy you, to vex you, to harass you. So the Bible says in Mark 4 and 30, 38, the Bible says, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Watch this. This is how the enemy works. He attacks what we care about the most. A major misconception is that if people don't respond to our situation the same with the same level of frustration, turmoil, or concern, then they obviously don't understand our care. So when I'm in when I'm in when I'm in crisis mode, when when it, when when, it, when it's, it's critical and 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 when everybody got to come to my age and and, it, and it, they don't they're not not as concerned as I am and, and they're not they're not in turmoil like I am, then they evidently they don't like me. But the devil is a lie. I am not supposed to be like you. Some Somebody's got to be stand flat-footed and be able to declare truth in the situation. Somebody's got to be level-headed. If I'm tilting and you're tilting, then we're not level-headed. The disciples assumed that since Jesus was sleeping through the storm, he didn't care about them or their situation. I'm not concerned about Jesus' posture as I am concerned about his position. Some of you are more concerned about Jesus' posture than you are his position. His posture at the time, watch this, was laying down, sleeping. But his position was, I'm on board. So I prefer him to be on board. I don't care if he's asleep. I don't care. I don't care what he's doing just as long as he's on board. And so some of you are more concerned about his posture than you are his position. I just want him to be on board. I just need him when I need him, praise God. I need him to show up. When he need to show up. And I'm not saying show up on time. Because like Joshua. He can make time stand still. So I'm not concerned about his posture. I'm only concerned about his position. I thought somebody was going to celebrate him on that. Number four, number four, number four. Cultivate a life of prayer. My wife was talking about this on today. She was talking about uh, uh, warfare, prayer. She was talking about warfare. Uh, cultivate a life of prayer. Number four, cultivate a life of prayer. James 5 and 16 says, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 
The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, the Bible says, If my people are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Watch this. If I can't do nothing else, I can pray. I couldn't change the minds of the lenders, but I can pray. I can talk to God. You, you, you got to hear me. Because I found out just because many people say no, there's a yes waiting on you. And that's exactly what God did. I, I was not just sitting back, praise God, allowing people to do what they want to do. I kept on serving God. What is a servant? A servant is like a, a witch is waiting on tables. They're not just sitting there waiting, but they're waiting on tables. They're constantly serving. They're moving. I am not going to stay home, praise God, and stick my head in a proverbial sand. I'm going to make sure I'm doing something. When my master returns, Shall he find me so doing? So watch this, watch this, watch this. While I'm praying, I have to have an giving. Number five in my, in, in my closing. Number five, know the one to whom you are praying. Know the one to whom you are praying. Even after Jesus calmed the storm, the disciples questioned who he really was. Now, 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 what else do you need from Jesus? It's not like, it's not like this, this is the first time you've ever seen him do a miracle. And you're still questioning who he is. It amazes me how God can bring you out time and time again. But you still become vexed over the same thing, same things. How God delivers you time and time again, but, but you experience a situation that's similar to what God brought you out, and you allow the devil to vex you again. So you got to understand that the devil wants to keep you in captivity. And if he can, if he can keep a believer in captivity, you become ineffective. You won't witness, you won't sow, you won't serve, you won't walk in love. And so if he can keep you in captivity, praise God, then you become ineffective. That's what he was trying to do with Paul and Silas. He tried to keep them in prison to shut them up. Y'all getting quiet. Y'all getting quiet. He tried to keep Paul. Oh, I, 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 think I, I think I just might preach this. He, he tried to keep them. He tried to keep them in prison to silence them. He tried to keep them in prison to shut them up because remember what was happening. There was a damsel, praise God, that was, that was operating in the spirit of sedition. And she began to say, these are the prophets that come to show us the way of the Lord. And she was, and the Bible says this, the Bible says, after many days, Paul became vexed in his spirit and he rebuked that spirit. Now she couldn't make her masters much gain. And he threw Paul and Silas in jail to do what? To shut them. So the devil want to put you in jail to shut you up. But let me say this. While I'm in jail, I'm going to agree with Paul. And I'm going to agree with Silas. That one person sang and the other person prayed. While you're praying, I'm going to be singing. And while I'm singing, you start giving God some praise. And as long as one of the twins starts activating, the prison doors has to open up because one of the twins came together and God showed up. Somebody yell, one the twins activate, one the twins activate. Yeah, that is it. Raymond, this is too Oh, one the twins, one the twins activate. It was when they put two hands, when they put a hand together, praise God. And then one ring touched another ring, or one hand touched another hand, and all of a sudden, power came. So the devil tried to keep you in bondage to shut you up. But while I'm in bondage, I'm going to be like David. Help! 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 Help!
that, maybe that wasn't deep enough for y'all religious folks. Father, thank you. Because you know exactly what you're doing. Thank you for this prison. I know one day you're going to bring me out. But while I'm here, I'm going to give you some praise. While I'm here, I'm not going to hang my harps on a willow tree and refuse to sing a new song in a foreign land. I'm going to give you some praise right here. Now, 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 now. I said that the devil will put you in prison to make you ineffective and to shut you up. Now watch this, Raymond. You got to get this. You got to take this with you. You got to get this. You got to get this. They were in prison and one began to sing and one began to pray. But now watch this. Watch this. The Bible says that an earthquake came and all, A-L-L, -L, all. That means through my singing and through my prayer, somebody that's connected to me is about to get free. Girl, you about to get free. You just don't even know. But you connected to me. Mama about to get free. Daddy about to get free. Granddaddy about to get free. Children about to get free. Supervisors about to get free. I'm about to sing and praise God. I'm about to sing and pray. And somebody is about to get free. So the Bible says all their bands were loose. Now, 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 Missy, you, you won't be blessed by this, but, but, but I will. But now watch this. I believe, I believe that, that God had, like, like, like when Jesus said, I must go, go by Samaria. He said, I must go by Samaria. He, he, he went by Samaria just to, just to touch one, one young lady, and, and that one young lady touched the whole city. Okay, I believe that, that God allowed them, God allowed, allowed that, that damsel to vex them to such degree that they had to cast the devil out that, that, that damsel to go to prison because God was concerned about one man. I wish I, I, I wish I had some real saints up in this joint today. The Bible says that the prison door opened up, all their bands were loose, and the Bible says the jailer got up and looked in and was about to commit suicide. He was about to take his own life until Paul said, don't hurt yourself, don't harm yourself, we are all here. Then they went to his house, baptized, y'all not hear me, and his whole house, I, I, I wish, I, God, I wish this was a Sunday, whole house was saved. Jesus. Jesus. How will we ever have peace? In the storm, if we are always questioning who he is in the boat with us. There are times when God will use a storm in our lives to reveal a new side of himself that we had previously not known or been exposed to before. Mm. In my closing, in the seventh verse says this, it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we are, we are standing against the spirit of uncertainty. We are standing against the spirit of uncertainty. We are standing against the spirit of uncertainty. So I'll say this again. As believers, we, we, we can't afford to become ambiguous about the future because we know who holds our future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since we know who holds our future, we've got to celebrate him for holding us and taking us into our future. Put your hands together to give God some praise right there. It's 7 o'clock. I, I, I went over my time. It's 7 o'clock. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on and put your hands together and give God some praise. Come on, from the rising of the sun to going down to the same, God is still worthy. Come on, is he still worthy? Is he still worthy? Come on and bless him then. Bless him. If he's still worthy, just bless him on credit. Glory to God. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you, Lord God, that you've blessed your people on tonight. I pray right now, Lord God, that every person upon the sound of my voice... God was richly blessed by 
by the word of the Lord. I pray, Lord God, that they experience an impartation, that their lives are forever changed because of, because of my obedience to you. Bless them now, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for this moment in which you've given me, God, to share your word. I pray that I've done everything in which you have commanded me to do and say, God, if I didn't, please forgive me, God, because I don't ever want to take your grace, your, your anointing for granted. I love you, Father, and I bless you in advance. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Listen real fast before we go. All of you that want to be want to be a blessing to this ministry, there is a there is a cash app at the bottom there. Praise God. Uh, go ahead and just sow into this ministry. All of you that want to be a a partner. We don't need pretenders, but we need partners. Praise God to keep on teaching and preaching the word of the Lord. If you want to uh, sow a one time gift or you become uh, become a partner be, and, and uh, end up sowing uh, once a month, we're not asking you for <coughs> a specific amount. Just let God uh, reign and rule on, on your heart uh, to, to, to sow that once a, a, a month, praise God. And I bet, I, ble I bet you God will, I bet you, I, I, I bet you God will bless your life if you obey him. Amen. Thank y'all so very much. We will see y'all Sunday morning. Y'all give God some praise. Yeah.